Consider a firm. I'll take the example of a farmer since that's what I've been using a lot up till now. Who has two farms. Farm 1 and Farm 2. If you're not thinking about a farmer but an industrial company, then the company could have two different manufacturing plants. The purpose of this lesson is to claim that the marginal product of water in Farm 1 should be the same as the marginal product of water in Farm 2, and the marginal product of fertilizer in Farm 1 should be the same as the marginal product of fertilizer in Farm 2. In other words, you have equality of marginal products on the different farms, or if you have an industrial concern in the different manufacturing locations and the different uh, industrial plants. To explain why, suppose this weren't the case. Suppose you had unequal marginal product. Let's take the marginal product of fertilizer just as an example. What I'm going to show is that if you have an unequal marginal product of fertilizer, then something's going wrong. You're not The firm is not maximizing profit. Suppose that the marginal product of fertilizer in firm number one is three, and in firm number two it's six. Now, I know we haven't studied costs yet, but ultimately this is going to have something to do with profit, and so I will be using some notions of, of profit, revenues, and costs that you learned in principles. I'll also e explain them rather slowly as I go along. I need to show that this is not a good way to run your business. And so what I'm going to do is show that if the farmer made a change from this, it would be an improvement. And therefore, this isn't a good way to run his business. The change I'm going to propose is that the farmer, since the marginal product of fertilizer is so much higher in Farm 2 than in Farm 1, that the farmer use more fertilizer in Farm 2 and less fertilizer in Farm 1. In particular, for fertilizer, I'm going to I'm going to suggest that what the farmer do is use minus one pound of fertilizer in Farm 1 and add that to Farm 2. See what his change in output is. Now, you know that the definition of the marginal product of fertilizer is the change in corn output over the change in fertilizer holding water fixed. For farm one, the change in fertilizer is minus three. You're reducing fertilizer, I mean, it's minus one. You're reducing fertilizer by one pound. And therefore, from, from this equation, you're going to reduce corn output by three bushels. For farm number two, you've increased fertilizer by one pound. And according to the same kind of equation, if you increase fertilizer by one pound, so delta F is plus one, that means delta Q is going to be plus six. So overall, with both of your farms combined, you've increased corn output by three bushels. And if the price of corn is a constant, it's not changing, then of course what that means is that, that this change has increased total revenue. That's total revenue, which is just price times quantity. So that's a good thing.
Now, what's happened to cost? Well, my claim is that the change in total cost here is zero because you haven't changed the total amount of fertilizer you're using overall. You're just switching a one pound of fertilizer from farm one to farm two. So the net change in fertilizer is zero. And we haven't talked about water at all, so you're not changing water and you're not changing fertilizer, so you're not changing your cost. So the the change that I've proposed doesn't change cost, but it produces more corn. And therefore what you were doing before was dumb. Because you could have done something else, namely namely you you this you made this change, the change I just illustrated. And you would have made you, you wouldn't have changed your costs at all, and you'd be buying just as much water and just as much fertilizer as you were before, but you've been making more corn. So clearly, what you were doing before was was is not profit maximizing was not a good way to run the the company. What caused that bad way to run the company was the fact that you had unequal marginal products. If the two numbers in the red circle were the same, this wouldn't have happened. And that's how I therefore draw the conclusion that the firm should have the marginal product of fertilizer in farm number one equal to the marginal product of fertilizer in farm number two. And that's the same for water the marginal product of water in farm number one should equal the marginal product of water in farm number two. And it's a general result that the marginal product of one input should be the same over all the different manufacturing plants or farms that a company uses. Now, there's an assumption I've made here, which is that in all these different places, the price of the inputs are the same. If you've got one you know, one of these farms is in the United States and the other farm is in Mexico, then you might not want to have equal marginal products because the price of fertilizer might be different in these two places. So that's not what I'm talking about. But if we have the same input prices, actually all the input prices, not just, all the input prices have to be the same. It's not enough, let's say, for the price of fertilizer to be the same in order to claim that the marginal product of fertilizer has to be equal. You actually need the price of water to be the same in order to claim that the marginal product of fertilizer has to be equal. In other words, all the input prices have to be the same in order to claim that any of the marginal products are the same. But as long as all the input prices are the same, then th these are general results that the marginal products of inputs shouldn't, shouldn't vary. They should be equal to each other.